how do we bend a box offset in conduit? So this is what a box offset looks like, fully finished. You can see it's sitting down on the bottom, it bends up slightly and goes into that connector. This is using steel conduit, but I'm about to use aluminum conduit. And with aluminum, it's a lot easier to overbend. So we just have to be careful not to go too over the top with our bending. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to Penn Aluminum. Thank you so much, Penn, for sending me all of this aluminum conduit and for sponsoring this video. Um, so the benefits of working with aluminum conduit, A, it's way lighter, so like you wouldn't believe how much like a big stack of conduit that you can lift up when it's aluminum, it's so much lighter. Um, a lot easier to bend too, so like if you're used to bending like one inch, inch and quarter, inch and a half conduit, um, be, uh, being able to bend aluminum versus like really like struggling with steel. Um, so the benefit, you know, is obviously it's lighter, but, but being able to bend it is such a huge thing. There's even this coating that they can put on the inside of the conduit that's called blue lightning. It's sort of like a Teflon coating, um, but it essentially makes pulling a lot easier on the inside of conduit. A lot of times when you're using aluminum conduit, it, it kind of catches more than the steel does. So it's a little bit more difficult to pull wire through sometimes, but with a coating like this, it comes through with a breeze. And the cost of aluminum versus the cost of steel, you're always gonna pay less with aluminum than you are with steel. So just kind of across the board, it makes sense to be using aluminum conduit. If you're interested in finding out more about pen aluminum or looking into their aluminum conduit, check the link in the description below. So all we wanna do, you don't even have to have like a precise exact measurement for any of this, cause you're not gonna get that with the bender. You're not gonna be able to like move the bends around enough to to even worry about it. So we just kind of do like an eyeball sort of thing. I know that I've got about a half inch of clearance that I need to get. So really you can see, it's not very much that I need to bend. You don't ever wanna just put conduit in like that and put it up on a wall. Cause look, you have this gap and it's a decreasing gap as it goes back. It just looks like crap. So every box that you go into, you need to do an off box offset for. It's gonna make your conduit looks, uh, runs look really, really neat. Now you could come back and start like way back here, but then you're gonna have all of this that's above here and it's not gonna come back to the ground until back here. So usually I do my, all my box offsets starting at the very end of the bender. I don't line my mark up. I don't mark it up like that. I leave this flush with the end of the bender. I don't draw any lines or anything. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a kick. Like you look how incredibly little that was. You could barely see any movement on that. Then I'm gonna come through, flip my bender over. I'm gonna go pretty close to that bend. You could, again, you could come like way back here if you want to, it doesn't really matter. But for a box offset, most of the time, I'm just gonna hug it really close. I wanna make sure I don't get too close and be in, you know, where my bender is in the middle of the bend. I just come back a little bit. And then again, you wanna make sure that your conduit is straight. You don't want this thing to be turned so that your pipe's going off to the side. Um, it's gonna dog leg the, the crap out of it. So you wanna make sure that everything is nice and straight. Same thing, we're gonna bend down, barely kick it. And there you go. You can see, nice and flush on the ground where it needs to be, barely steps up and goes up into your box. That's gonna look clean, especially once you have like multiple of them coming in and out of the box, multiple different directions they could be going out if you're putting commercial boxes like up on a wall um, and you've got tons of them like in line with each other. It's just gonna look so nice when you've got something that rolls up into a box offset, rolls back out, keeps going down the wall. All right, so that's pretty much it. Box offsets are super simple. Um, you're gonna mess a lot of them up before you perfect it. Uh, you're always gonna get them a little too much or a little too small. So just um, the more practice that you get, the better. Just remember, it's usually less bending than you think it is for a box offset. So thank you guys so much for watching. Love you crazy people, and I'll see you in the next one.